Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break with Dora Almasi. She is a postdoctoral researcher at the Environmental Sciences and Policy Department at the Central European University. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with unique insights from the world of academia and higher education. In this series, we have conversations with team members of the Naturevation Project, funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 programme. Coffee Break with Researchers makes scientific knowledge accessible to all. Dora, thank you very much for accepting this invitation to have a coffee break with me. How are you doing? Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm doing quite well and uh, thanks for the opportunity for having this discussion. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I want to know which coffee are you having? I'm having today a black coffee from Costa Rica. Very nice. Um, actually, I, I am having a latte, but um, I, I don't know where is it coming from. So, but it's very, it's quite tasty. That's good to know. Dora, I want to talk with you today about the tool you're working on, the Urban Nature Atlas. I understand this is a very big database within the Naturevation project. Could you please tell us what this uh, tool is about? So the Urban Nature Atlas was developed as, the, as an output of the Naturevation project, uh, which is a Horizon 2020 research project about the potentials of nature-based solutions for addressing urban sustainability challenges. And when the project started back in uh, 2017, uh, we wanted to develop a, a large database of urban nature solutions uh, coming from different parts of Europe to be able to understand the landscape of urban nature-based solutions um, addressing urban sustainability challenges across Europe. So we selected 100 cities uh, from uh, Europe and we uh, aimed at collecting 1,000 cases uh, from these 100 cities. And uh, we have worked on this database the, during the whole summer of 2017, and then we uh, merged uh, all the questionnaires and all the information that we collected on these cases into one large database, uh, which is now presented at the website of the Naturevation Project, and it's called the Urban Nature Atlas. So this is an interactive tool, a platform uh, where you can search uh, for specific cases according to what type of uh, urban nature they are representing, uh, where are they situated, uh, in which country, in which city, who is governing them, uh, how they are financed, uh, how much they cost, um, and so on. Wow, that sounds indeed like a great database. So how does it work? Okay, so um, it has a, like a search function, function uh, with a map. So you go online to the Nature Vision Project website and then you can select uh, what type of nature-based solutions you are interested in, whether you want to find projects that are addressing climate change issues, water management issues, or um, for example, societal issues like social cohesion or social inclusion or you want to look for projects that are green roofs or um, water management solutions or even like lakes or rivers. And then um, you select your interest and then it will filter you a set of projects uh, which are fitting the descriptions or the selections that you have chosen. So as this is a large database, uh, even if you are filtering the, the database results according to various um, filters, you will still find quite many projects. And once you click on the projects that you have selected, uh, you will see a short description of each of the projects presenting uh, the goals, the implementation activities, um, but even the governance uh, settings, the amounts they were financed from, and whether any kind of monitoring activities were taken place to record the impacts of the projects. This is a great idea. So why do you think it was so important to develop such a tool? The concept of nature-based solution is obviously not very new. The, the term itself is quite new, but there have been green infrastructure solutions, blue infrastructure solutions for quite a while around. And the, the society and the, the research, uh, these researchers were aware of their importance for quite a while. But um, we, haven't, we didn't know too much about 
uh, how they look like, how frequent they are in cities, what kind of solutions we can find in cities. So when we started the project, it seemed very important to develop a, like a general baseline assessment of nature-based solutions and how, what type of solutions exist, what kind of challenges they are addressing and how they actually being managed and implemented. So we meant this as a baseline tool, like a baseline assessment, but in fact, uh, during the project, it has turned to be a very uh, useful and widely used uh, source. Um, so what happened was that uh, first we developed a baseline assessment report, just understanding the basic features of nature-based solutions. So for example, from our initial analysis, we have seen that uh, there are many parks across Europe that are being uh, updated or improved to address 21st century urban sustainability challenges. But there are also many in more innovative solutions like um, green roofs or green walls or green water management solutions which are trying to absorb um, like suddenly coming storm waters or, or trying to act as flood protection measures. And um, this, uh, the, the data of the Urban Nature Atlas or the collected uh, questionnaire results were also used later uh, within and beyond the project for various other research activities. There was a, there was a research developed or a report developed um, just studying what kind of innovations nature-based solutions are bringing forward. And there is another uh, research uh, stream that is looking at how the nature-based solutions included in the atlas uh, varies um, based on the context, based on the city context, based on the health health um, health circumstances or the uh, so other socioeconomic circumstances of cities. And um, we have also received quite many uh, visitors to the urban nature atlas. Uh, I think since uh, the launch of the Atlas, which was in 2018, March, we have received over 40,000 visitors. And we have also decided to update this Atlas this year. So since the early summer, uh, we are now look going through all the cases, all the thousand cases that are included in the Atlas. And we are double checking if the references are still working and if the data is still correct and trying to update it so that hopefully um, the, the database and the cases presented in the database remains relevant for the next couple of years and it can be used as a, as a resource for uh, policymakers, researchers or people who are just interested in, in nature-based solutions. I imagine this is of great importance for municipalities so what can you say about what users can learn by using this tool? Mm -hmm. So I, for, I think first of all there are very inspiring examples in the, in the nature base, so in, the, in, the, in the urban nature atlas. You can, you can find very innovative examples. There is for example the Bosco Verticale which is in Milano and this is an apartment building which have uh, green walls and green facades uh, all around the building. But um, you can also find solutions which are actually quite easy to, to realize and implement. And uh, people wouldn't necessarily think that they can bring urban nature right to their uh, doorstep. And it's, it's actually much more easy than you would think. So if there is a small vacant area, um, residents of the buildings in many, many cities, they turn those vacant areas into community gardens or pocket parks or uh, if there is a if there is a river which is which runs through the city, sometimes they cover it um, and it can be reopened so that citizens of the city can have a better access um, to the to this to the lake to the river so that they can enjoy it more. So I think uh, one one important um, aspect of the urban nature atlas is that it can showcase innovative cases, but uh, it can also showcase everyday solutions. That, that are very easy to implement. And I think the other important lessons learned that users can take away from the Urban Nature Atlas that uh, nature-based solutions can take many form. Uh, they can be implemented by governmental actors, but also by citizen groups or businesses. Uh, they can be small projects, they can be large scale projects. So they can, they can really vary from one to another. And I think the Urban Nature Atlas, because especially because it's a very large scale um, database, it can showcase this variety. So I think that's the that's the main uh, takeaway from the atlas.
Dora, those were all my questions. Thank you very much again for your time and for having a coffee break with me. I wish you the best for future, future projects and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice chatting you. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this project, you can find the link here below. See you next time. Bye-bye.